Welcome to this short demonstration on a password request with one identity safeguard. At the current moment, we are using our standard demo environment. And as you may see, you're going to have a couple of systems here in my environment. We have the SPP, the safeguard for privileged password. That's the interactive thing we are going to now target first. And the other one is the SPS, the session proxy, we're going to use in a later demonstration. And we have a couple of uh, test systems we have to, to access via password or session requests. And of course, we have some client. So if we want to request a password via safeguard for privileged passwords, first you have to log into some system and use a client to access the uh, privileged password vault or the safeguard for privileged passwords to do the request. You can use a couple of clients to do this. One of the most common thing would be to use a browser, and this is what we're going to do. So first, we're going to go to our client system. In this case, is it's a Windows system, just a pretty standard normal workstation. Let's just adjust this a little bit so that we can have the login screen and log in to our system. I'm now using the administrator account. Of course, you can use any account that you have on that system. So that is of no importance because, as you already know, all the stuff is otherwise configured in Safeguard. So the usual user you're using here for your accessing this password with the browser on this system is of no one. So let's insert the password. Let's log into the system and then we're going to start. It may take a little second. Here we are. So the first thing we just now use is our browser. So click on the browser and target your browser to the Safeguard web portal. Usually this is yeah, pre-configured or whatever, just put in safeguard.domain or whatever your, your location is, and then you should, sit, should, you should see some screen similar to this. Log in with the username you have configured. In this case, my username is requester, and the password for this requester I have stored here. And I'm now gonna log in. There's a couple of other old stuff. We just simply put this away. And you may not see this favorites. This is something we're going to target later. And uh, the usual thing you now have to click is this blue button, New Request. As usual, you now see the list of systems you have access to. And as you all may already know, everything is pre-configured in Safeguard. So you're going to see only the systems that uh, are configured for you. So everything that's not configured for you, of course, so it's inaccessible. First of all, we're going to use this uh, domain controller. Or let's use the Linux server, or we can use both, whatever you want. And then we just have to click on the next. And now we can select accounts if this is configured for us. As, as said before, this is purely configuration. And in this case, we're going to use the Linux admin. And click on OK. And now you see that the access type is a password. Depending on the configuration, there may be multiple access types available. But we just want to do a password request. Next thing. Select on Next, and now you're going to see the final screen that is a couple of things you may have to enter or not. This may look completely different on your, depending on your configuration. This is highly configurable. We try to make it pretty much easy, so we just don't include so many options. So in the next thing, just select the reason, whatever, and maybe a comment, but this is optional, and then submit request. Now the system is working in the back, and now you see we have pending approval. This is some special configuration we have introduced here in our use case. So in this case, we just click on the browser tab. We just go to the safeguard and log in with the approver, with the password we have stored as well. Log in. And now you're going to see the approver window. And you may see that you have a couple of approvals waiting. In this case, it's only one. Click on that and approve the request. Go back to your standard stuff here that you have been the requester. And now you have you see that your the status of your request is switched to available. And if you now click on this, it gives you that nice little screen where you can click on the show button. So that gives you a printout of the actual current password of the account that you have been requesting. Okay, let's have a look on the next demonstration. This is about session access. And we have two capabilities in Safeguard to get in touch with our appliance. We can use a browser as usual, or we can use the Windows-based fat client. I'm gonna show you both of this. 
So let's start with a standard browser. Let's make more or less one of the standard use cases as usual. Okay, so we are back in our environment and we log in as the requester and we have this password and we see our standard screen. Nothing's on, so everything's fine. So click on new request, select in this case the domain controller. We just want to try to have some kind of RDP access. Click on next, select the domain controller. This is already pre-configured in our access request policy in, 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 in our configuration. So we just have RDP. Go on next. There's nothing here to add. Just click on submit. And now you have our request here in the list of uh, active requests. You see it's already available, so there's no approval inside. So in this case, just click on available. And now you're going to see this screen that shows you a little bit more information as before is the password request. So we have our computer ID, we have the username connection string, and this is more or less the magic. This looks pretty weird. If you click on show, it takes a little to compute this. So this is a very long string with some cryptic information in it. So more or less, this is the information you need to pass the proxy. So we just click on hide. And now the easiest way is to just to click on download RDP file. That will download all the appropriate information for the connections to some kind of RDP file. And if you have your file association set and configured right, the only thing you need is just to click on that downloaded file. You're going to see that box. And as it was written here, type SG into password prompt. Just type in SG and click on OK. And here you are. You will be logged in as the requested privileged user into that system. And now you can start working with this. So let me just log out here again, just show you the other way. So we're going to sign out as the administrator. And if we don't want to use the browser, we just click this away for a second. And we want to use our safeguard client. This is the standard Windows based FAT safeguard client. So if you click now on connect, there may be the case that the browser will show up again to do the login procedure. This is a new feature in version 2.9. If you don't want this, this can be configured or you simply click on shift on connect button and then you're going to follow the standard procedure. So in this case, log in as the requester with the password. And because we are talking to the same appliance with the same user. So we have all the, re all the requests we have used with the browser before available and the request is still available because we don't have it checked in. So we simply click on see if you go to available, you're going to see this little triangle over here. If you click that, it will automatically call the Microsoft Terminal Service Client for you with the appropriate information provided and you will be signed in directly. So you don't have to type in anything or download the file. It's a little bit more convenient, but on the other hand, you have to use the fat client that maybe is not applicable in your environment to have access to it. Okay, thanks for watching.